Welcome back everyone, it's Baz again with another video from World of Warships Legends. And today we are in the Nelson. This is the British Tier 6 Premium Battleship. And in this game, we are in a game of domination on the fault line map. And just briefly there, we saw our shipping forecast. In our team, we have two Guides, an Aoba, a Nuremberg, a Pensacola, a York, an Arizona, and a KG-5. And for the enemy team, they have a Fubuki, a T-61, an Aoba, a La Galicinaire, a York, an Ismail, a Normandy, and a Gneisenau, and Colorado in a division. Now, as you already know from the title of the video, this game does end in a solo warrior. And for me, I just found that a little extra and unique because I don't see the Nelson as the type of ship that uh, can get that type of metal. Especially with the commander I'm running. When I first got this ship, I was using Cunningham because he was my higher level commander. And I thought he'd improve the dispersion on the Nelson because I find that it's not the most accurate uh, dispersion. But unfortunately, his skills make the ship very unmaneuverable. And I found it just to be way too slow and way too cumbersome. So now I've swapped over to using Madden on the Nelson. And I find it to be a little bit better, even though the range is reduced and there's slightly less firepower. But I find the Nelson is more of a mid-range ship rather than a long-distance sniper. And due to it being an all-or-nothing ship with the turrets all in the front, the extra maneuverability definitely helps when there are ships on either side of you or perhaps behind you. And so that's why I found this game to be a bit of an oddity, because I'm just kind of chugging along most of the game. And when it did come to the close quarters combat, I felt like I was kind of lucky to get away unscathed. But we will get to that later. Right now we've just been moving forward towards the Alpha objective. And the enemy T-61 was spotted briefly there for a second. And he had popped his smoke. And of course, uh, being in Nelson, we had HE ready to go. And we were able to get a nice chunk of damage against him. And it seemed like our two cruiser teammates were focusing in on him as well, which was nice to see. And our friendly Pensacola is just putting caution to the wind. And he's just uh, going all out to try and get this T-61. And he must have him up on his sonar there. That's why he's being spotted. And eventually we all worked together and we were able to uh, take him out, which was a big help. But unfortunately, we lose our friendly Pensacola in the process, but that's definitely a worthwhile trade. I'll take that any day. But now that the destroyer's out of the way, and the enemy cruiser and battleship that are in front of us are not really uh, concerned with contending the cap, we're just going to go right into it and cap it ourselves. We got ourselves into a little bit of trouble and we just barely dodged a torpedo. This Alpha Objective doesn't have any islands in it. And being that I'm a slow moving Nelson, I wanted to take cover. So my idea was to get as close to the island past the cap as possible. So the enemy ships wouldn't be able to shoot over it. And by doing that, it actually helps to draw the two ships out from behind that island. With the Aoba going uh, more to the west. And the enemy Normandy taking a more eastern approach. And obviously I'm more concerned about the Normandy, so I get angled towards him. And I gotta say, this Aoba comes out in front of me and he commits grand larceny. Can't tell you how many shots I took at this guy throughout this game and just nothing would kill him. The first shot with HE, of course, that's not going to uh, delete him or anything. That's going to uh, do a decent amount of damage though. But as you saw there, the dispersion was just nasty. I think that was only three hits. With this Aoba is giving us uh, a lot to shoot at here, so we did swap the AP. And for our next shot, we waited until he turned a little bit broadside and we lined it up. And the shells just take a wild dive right at the end there, all into the water. We barely get any damage in on him there. Meanwhile, the Normandy is resetting us in the cap, so it's taking quite a while to uh, accrue the cap points. Our friendly cruiser is trading shots with this Aoba, which is good to see. And we would like to help him out here. So for our next shot, we wait until he makes his turn. Line it up again, and this time we're going to aim slightly higher. And that way, if the shells are going to dive at the end, then they'll be right on target, right? But that time, they hang in the air forever and go over the top of him. 
Come on, stupid game. Jesus, what do I have to do here to get a freaking shot on target? With this Aob is uh, running for his life here, his Normandy teammate has uh, kind of put himself out of position. I don't know if he's shooting at uh, some of our other teammates or something instead of us. But we get one final shot on this Aoba and just get a whole bunch of overpens. Jesus. That ends up being a very good example of why I swapped commanders. If an accuracy build with Cunningham isn't going to be accurate, then I'm just going to use the survivability commander. And I'll just use Cunningham as an inspiration. What do you think about that, huh, game? Will you let me hit something then? Well, now that the Ioba has turned tail and run away, we're not going to chase him to the edge of the map like a whole bunch of uh, other players I see do. It is tempting because he is on life support. But instead our next target is going to be that Normandy. Look at him, he's just begging for it and so we line up the perfect shot but again with the dispersion. We only get two pins out of all that. Decent damage, but it should have been way better. And we did see that Aoba pop up for a second there. We did try to turn our attention towards him. But at the last second, right before our guns reloaded, he was able to uh, drop spot. And so we focused our attention back towards the Normandy. Surprisingly, the turret traverse on the Nelson isn't very good. The only positive note is that the turrets are all on the front, and so going from port to starboard or starboard to port, it doesn't take as long as it would say to uh, rotate all your turrets on a ship that had back turrets. And we're able to fire shot away at that Normandy, and we're in a good solid range for the Nelson right now, and, and we get uh, solid penetrations on him. A salvo of over 10,000 in damage. And of course, that annoying cheeky Aoba is getting pot shots over the island at us now. And that little bugger is able to light us on fire. He's gonna pay for that. The enemy Fubuki has popped up on the screen now. He's uh, dead center in the middle of the map. We'll worry about that Fubuki in a second. We are up in points here, and obviously, we control two caps. And we've been controlling three caps for the majority of the game. Unfortunately, we're starting to lose ships here. Now as I go in to finish this Normandy, we're down two ships to five. My secondaries are able to put in some nice work, and they're able to finish off the Normandy. That way I'm able to save my main battery for this Fubuki, who's now decided to charge at me. And so now what I'm thinking is to use the carcass of the Normandy as cover against the Fubuki's torpedoes, because if he's rushing at me like this, I assume torps are incoming. I'm hoping that my secondaries are able to uh, get some uh, damage on this Fubuki. And I guess because we're making such a drastic turn there, once that secondary consumable wears off, all our secondary shots just stuff straight into the water. So we were able to swap back to HE, but unfortunately because of all of our turrets being in the front, we have to swing around and hope that that Fubuki doesn't make it out of our sight before we're able to get a shot away. But we did get a shot away, and we were able to finish him off, and that nets us our second kill of the game. And off in the distance there, the enemy Ganiza now is continuing to cap the Bravo objective. And we had one loaded turret left for him. So we fired away on him and we reset that cap. But of course, right before all that action went down, we lost our final teammate. And we got the old, our team depends upon you message. And since right after that, I eliminated the biggest threat to me, which was the Fubuki. Since we were way up in points and we controlled all the caps, I just said screw it. Let's just get that Solo Warrior Medal and grab some free global XP boosters since you get 10 of them for getting that Solo Warrior Medal. And although I did see that the Ganiza now was on life support, I had no idea how much health the Colorado had left. And I thought charging at uh, those two might be a big mistake. Plus this freaking Aoba is still wandering around in the back edge of the map. So who knows, I might have got myself into a spot of trouble there, where even though if I did take out the Colorado and the Gneisenau, 
maybe they'd take me out, leaving the Aoba as the sole survivor. So I just kept plowing ahead, not firing my guns, trying to drop detectability, all the while trying to hunt down this Aoba that had been pissing me off all game. And I know he's over there because he launched his plane and I can see his plane. And he did launch some torps at me there that were easy to dodge. RNG be damned, I'm gonna get this frickin' Aoba. And as we are chasing him around this island here, gives us a quick moment for a Vaza soapbox segment. Probably heard me complain about this before, but I just want to get it out there again. That this frickin' fault line map, when you're playing capture the base mode, is the worst map in the game. Now in domination mode, it's fine. As you can see by this game, it was a great game. And even though the spawns are always screwed up on this map, because of the layout of the capture points, the games always end up being fun and competitive. You know, I say it all the time, but I'm gonna keep saying it. That fault line sucks as a capture of the base map because it just ruins the flow of the game. Like I said, the spawns are terrible, which leaves you always in a 3v6 on one side and a 6v3 on the other. And whoever clears their side first goes to the base, and the other side has to scramble back to the base and stop them, which takes forever to get back there, so you spend 75% of the game just sailing your ship around, and it makes the game super boring, and we don't want that, do we? So that's why I say that fault line badly needs to be a domination only map. Alright, moving back onto the game. And we finally made it to the point where we can take a shot on this Aoba, and this time no RNG in the world is going to stop me from getting rid of him. And finally we're able to finish him off. Then that's us our third kill of the game. He was able to light us on fire there, and I was so tempted to press my damage con, but I thought, no, there's going to be torps incoming, you know it. Now, I'm always tempted to use my damage con as soon as I drop detectability to uh, save as much hit points as possible. But definitely in this situation, you knew that torps were incoming. It's just like we thought we weren't able to turn in time and we do take one of his torps. Had we not saved that damage con, we definitely would have flooded out with less than 15,000 health left. And with no further action in the game, we're just going to speed things up here. Because there's a full 3 minutes left. And for whatever reason, those two ships just couldn't uh, catch me. The slow moving Nelson, I was expecting that Colorado to not only catch up to me, but overtake me. And right as we hit the edge of the map, we accrue enough points to hit that thousand mark, we get our victory and our solo warrior medal. So that wasn't the prettiest game, but it was definitely a good demonstration of making the smart play at the end and not trying to win too hard. Our stats weren't anything special, we ended the game with 74,000 in damage and 3 kills. In addition to our solo warrior medal, we also got a dreadnought medal. And funny enough, that just happens to be my 5th solo warrior from standard play. Plus the one that I got in arena mode, which I don't really count, since that was super easy. And not surprisingly, we were at the top of the leaderboard for our team as well. And so there you have it, the solo warrior in the Nelson. If you did like that video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. And as always, stay healthy and do what makes you happy.